Hey, what's up guys? So it is time to do another video. And last time I tried to do a live video of the, um, I guess, disabling of the auto start stop in the, I guess the Audi S3 A3, the new facelift models. Um, it didn't really work out as planned. So in this video, I really wanted to go over the OBD11 software and how well it works and some of the features that you can do using that software. So in order to use the software, you will have to have an Android device. And what I did was I went out there and purchased a, uh, I guess it's an old Samsung Galaxy S3. So it's this right here. Basically it's a really old model. Um, it's real cheap and I just use it as a Wi-Fi device. Now you do have to have connectivity to Wi-Fi in order to use the software. Um, so you need to make sure that you're using this around your house and you've connected to your Wi-Fi network. So here's the actual device. Um, it does plug into your OBD2 port on your car. As you can see, this is the ports there. It is uh, Bluetooth compatible. It does use Bluetooth. That's one of the reasons that I um, actually recommend this over the Carista app. Um, Carista uses iOS, which does not utilize the Bluetooth, um, I guess, connectivity. So it's much slower. Um, another thing is if you have a facelift S3, A3, RS3. Um, when I tried using the software, a lot of the features just did not work um, with Carista. OBD11 is much different. Um, it works much better. There are a lot more features that actually work within this software and this, I guess, uh, dongle. So all you do is you take this and you plug it into your OBD2 port. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys can see that. Find it here plugged in you can see it lights up to let you know that it's actually plugged in and then once you have that thing plugged in you go onto your phone or your Wi-Fi device whatever it might be as long as it's Android and you can see here OBD 11 I click on that and it's gonna load up the actual software um, as you can see this does run on what's called credits and how that works is I do have the pro version, so basically what I did was I paid, I believe it's $69.99, and that allows you to use the long coding features. So basically this is, I wouldn't say just as good as VACOM, but it is uh, it does allow you to do a lot of the stuff that you can do within that software. So if you wanna get um, additional credits, all you gotta do is go into your profile and you click on get credits, and you can actually purchase additional credits. You can do 10, 100, 500 credits, or you can get free credits. And basically what this does, this is all I ever do is get free credits. Click on that, and what it does is it loads an ad, and you just watch like either a 30 second ad, or there is a little, um, I don't know, just ad pop up that comes up, and it gives you a credit. So you can get, I believe it's five credits, see just like this. So I click on the X, you'll see it says bonus credit added. And I believe you can do this five times a day so if you, you know, log into this every day and click on this, then you can get a pretty hefty bank in there, I guess, fairly quickly. So you can see I'm just adding these credits onto this. See how it says, come back tomorrow for additional. So basically, I added five credits to my account today. So now this is the uh, main screen. We'll go ahead and connect to my vehicle. Again, I am driving a 2017 Audi S3. Uh, this is the facelift model. And like I said before, OBD11 does work much better um, than Carista in the uh, facelift models. All right, so we have connected to the vehicle um, using OBD11. And basically you can see that automatic de automatically detects the vehicle that you are driving. So you can see 2017 S3, that's what I have. Now. If you want to go through the simple way of making changes to your car, uh, the best way to do that is within apps. And you'll see that there's a list of different things that you can unlock using these apps. And you can see the cost over here, the credit cost. So you can see there's all kinds of different things that you can change within this. Brake pad replacement, so you don't really have to go to the dealership to have that done now. Um, It's just going down the list, you can see. And each vehicle is going to be different. There, you know, this software does support multiple types of vehicles. Um, and each one of them has a different set of apps that you can have. So you can see, there's quite a few in here. And let me go up here to the top. 
So I'll go ahead and click into one of these apps, say for Mirror Dip, for example. This is automatically or already enabled within my car because I do have the uh, Prestige trim package, so my mirror does dip on the right-hand side. I'm not sure if this will connect to it because I already have that. Okay, so you can see here it says it's automatically on because I already have that feature in the car. But to change that, all you do is you would click this and then click off. Not that I'm going to turn it off. And once you've changed the option, you just press and hold this little check mark here and it saves that setting to your uh, to your vehicle. Let's go back. So that's just one way that you can make changes is within the apps themselves. And again, that costs you these credits over here on the right hand side. If um, you want to get into the long coding, which is where you can do a little bit more and that one doesn't cost you any, uh, any types of credits, you'll go back to the home screen here and you would click on this little icon there. And here's where you get into the actual control units of the car. So you can see, you can pretty much get into any aspect. I believe there is dashboard, so you can see there is a virtual cockpit. My car does have virtual cockpit in it, so you can get into that. This one does take a little bit longer to load, typically. All right, so here you can see we are within the uh, long coding options of uh, the virtual cockpit. And there was something that I had turned on that I actually want to turn off. And I believe it's within here. And it's related to the traffic sign display. So what I mean by that was, if you scroll down here, you go on traffic signs, no traffic sign information available. Now you can enable this, but there are multiple steps to it. Um, you do have to have uh, this thing up here. I, I can't see it. There's a camera up here uh, for the active lane assist. Um, but the thing that I enabled within this is strictly for the display. It doesn't enable all the features behind it, and I just want to go ahead and turn this off. So let's see if we can go in here and find where that was. Lane change assistant is on. You can see you can change all kinds of different stuff within this. Traffic sign detection right here. So I have it set as yes. So that's why that's showing there right now. Let's see if we go ahead and let's go ahead and turn that off since it doesn't really do anything. So we're gonna press and hold this little check mark and it's gonna load it and save it. Coding accepted. You can see it automatically just disappeared from my dash. So that's fixed. I wouldn't say fixed, it just we just removed it. Let's look at number 19. So this is where the auto start stop um, override is located. So we're gonna go ahead and go into this and I'm going to show you where it is and show you how to change that while we're in here. And I believe this one was under adaptation. You can see all these different options in here, and you should keep scrolling through this. Start, stop, voltage limit. So this is the one that we want. And when we go in this, it should show 12 is what I had overridden it to. And we're going to move it back to what it was before. I believe it's like 7.1 volts. All right, so here you can have, see that I set it to 12 volts. And we're going to go ahead and set this to... 7... Point one. We'll go ahead and enable that. So now this re-enabled the auto start stop in my vehicle. So that we change that, we'll go ahead and back out to the main screen. And I'll show you one last thing before we close out this video. Um, you can scan. There's another great thing about OBD11 is you can scan for faults and override or clear out those. Um, you know, if you have like a, a sensor up here that's giving you a uh, check engine light. Um, this is not an actual check engine light for some reason in the facelift models. When you have it in accessory mode, that shows up. People have asked me about that before. But anyway, so it scans through all the different systems and it'll tell you whether there are any fault codes um, that are showing and it'll actually allow you to clear them. All right, so it's finished doing the scan and you can see there are new faulty control units found. So that's a good thing. Um, I guess one last thing I want to show you guys, um, let's go back into the, actually we'll just click up here, into the car, and one of the great things about this is you can click on history and it actually shows you every single thing that has changed in the past, so if you think that you've screwed something up, 
um, you can go back in here and reset some of those things. So you can see the start stop voltage should actually be 7.6 volts instead of 7.1. So you can go in there and change that back and I'll do that to set it correctly. But there you have it. That's all of the features of OBD11. All right, so there you guys have it. There are There's a great overview of um, OBD11. And again, if you have a facelift model, um, I recommend that you go with OBD11 over Carista. I've used both of them and the actual Carista app. A lot of the stuff just is, does not work with um, the facelift models. If you guys have any questions about the software or the actual device itself, drop a comment down below and I'll actually go through there and answer all your questions. I hope this video helped you guys out, you know, make a decision between using Carista or OBD11. Again, if you are in a pre-facelift model, Carista is a great option. Um, a lot of the stuff still works with that. Um, but again, if you're within a facelift model, definitely go with OBD11. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you liked the video, be sure to drop a like down below. And like I said, drop a comment. I always love responding to your comments. It's always a lot of fun. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Really appreciate that. As always, don't forget to reflect and never settle.